This is Lauren Bond. I'm here with Thea Prince and Jane Rust at Jane's home in Reedyville, Tennessee. It is May 8, 2012. This interview is for Preserve the Area's Rural Qualities, a nonprofit organization that is interested in preserving the history of Reedyville, Tennessee and the Reedyville Mill. Do I have your permission to record this interview? Yes. Yes. All right. Well, uh, from what you've been telling me, you're wanting to discuss Park's involvement with the Reedyville Mill. So, um, where were you wanting to start with that today? I think I want to uh, start with, with Jane Rust giving the idea to a small group of people in 1992 to organize, to name ourselves, and to set our goals. And one of the goals was uh, what we could do to preserve an 1800s grist mill that was in poor condition. And that's how, how the involvement began. There were other issues at that time too though. There, were, there was a quarry that was, was not a good neighbor that was causing uh, pollution and noise problems. And so there were, there were issues on our wish list that got us involved with working in the area. Ask me another question. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, what were some of the first things that you did once Park was organized? Then? There was a public hearing about the quarry, the rock quarry, and that's where I first met Thea. Mm -hmm. And she said, We need to do something about this. I was taking a class at MTSU to renew my teaching certificate and got the idea of a community organization. And so we sort of took it from there. Jean Gilly and Teresa Wilson Tate were very interested in the mill and they had approached um, Jim Huda at the MTSU Historic Preservation to do a survey about the mill and that's where we got the big fat um, books that, that gave us the history of the mill and how to fix it and what needed doing. And, and has served as a source in all of these proceedings that we've been doing. And I think we gave y'all a copy of that. Yes. And the Gore mm -hmm. Center has a copy of it, so it should be available to anyone who wants to look at it. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, um, what are some of these photos about? Like, these right here in front of me. The photos in front of you are, come mm -hmm. from I believe, maybe the dining room mm -hmm. of uh, Miss Oliver's home, which is called the Corners. Mm -hmm. It's an old 1800s home, and she was uh, generous enough to be a hostess for a, a mill party, a fundraiser, to see what uh, interest there was and what financial help there might be available in the community to go on with Park's uh, hope, hopes for the mill. Uh, and these pictures show the two volumes that uh, MTSU's had, had done. And also we've dealt with uh, several artists who have donated uh, prints or drawings which have been uh, instrumental in doing some fundraising. The event included not only local uh, prominent and prominent farmers, ordinary folks who just loved the area and visited the mill when it was still functional, and also uh, political uh, friends of, as like Bart Gordon, who was a family friend of Miss Oliver's, mm -hmm. and that those connections were, were all good at the time, at the time, and always are, and uh, it was a good event. That was part of what got us going. Uh, Jim Huda's, Dr. Huda's suggestion was to try to get funds, governmental funds. And so we contacted a lot of different state and national. Um, and from that, we received a grant. From Senator Burke. Senator Burke from Cookville uh, 
was one of several uh, officials that we personally talked to or spent time with in our pursuit for funding and help with the state funding to go with our personal area funding to to be successful in in preserving the mill and uh, do I say in the amount in, in five thousand okay five thousand dollars uh, became accessible to us which we've which we've used very carefully over the last uh, 15 years uh, we also met with uh, the gentleman from uh, Smithville okay Frank Buck was also had been served in in the uh, Nashville legislature for quite a few years and he was another person that we visited with and to uh, try to encourage uh, participation in funding so before Tom Brady uh, bought the mill was your main goal to raise funds to preserve it like he's been do doing and you know restore it and things like that or our main goal was to purchase the mill and restore yeah. it mm -hmm. and um, we we did different fundraisers and tried to would you like us to tell you about some of these different sure. fundraisers yeah. Yeah. and then mm -hmm. um, when it became apparent we weren't mm -hmm. going to be able to purchase it then all the people who had donated any funds to us we contacted them and wrote them letters and asked permission to transfer those funds to what we call the heritage committee and that's what we've used to fund these oral histories so any of those monies that we raised in these various ways we kept really careful records and we got permission from everyone except one person who wanted their money back <laughs> and everybody else said go for it and so that's and um, thankfully Tom Brady came along and saved the mill so we we have used um, we have used the funds for this heritage committee and in the meantime we use the funds to buy materials to try to protect the mill and we'll show you some pictures about that about yeah. those projects yeah mm -hmm. so one of, one of the projects that uh, Jane is saying materials we got permission from the uh, Epperly family to uh, go on the premises we we were very careful not to do anything that and, were, and honored the fact that we were not the owners even though we felt we had so much love for, for the for the facility um, we got permission to winterize the mill by putting heavy-duty uh, plastics uh, over because all the windows had long since been broken out and we and we did that very carefully because uh, the mill especially on the upper couple, two floors was in uh, poor condition and we had to be careful or steps but we had a good a good turnout and um, we continued doing that for for several years here are some pictures of that and write-ups mm -hmm. from the newspaper okay So how long did it take to do that, to winterize the mill? It would take a whole Saturday morning. Mm -hmm. Those are great. So, so how many years did you work on doing these fundraisers before you decided to not purchase the mill anymore i think one of the one of the determining factors mm -hmm. was uh, we decided to meet with the husband of one of the daughters of the owner of the mill uh, he was a, a prominent attorney in nashville and we wanted to know what options we had for purchasing would it be a, a totally cash requirement and if so how much would it be or would would it be beneficial to that family to have a charitable write-off and donate in partially or in entirety the mill to the community uh, the result of that uh, visit and uh, discussions with 
also uh, attorney Frank Fly, who was very helpful. He's, uh, I believe he's still at work, uh, an attorney in Murfreesboro, just led us to the fact that uh, the funds required were just at, uh, more than we could possibly do. And so we would apply our energies and, our, and what funds we had to reserving, preserving the, uh, stories about the mill, like we had, or photos or past events in, uh, so that whatever happened to the mill, at least it would be preserved in some manner. We were still working to stabilize it. I mean, we still had permission from the family to, to stabilize it, but it got worse and worse, and so it got so that we didn't really feel comfortable being in there. But luckily, most of the plastic lasted pretty well. Mm -hmm. um, so, Thea was instrumental mm -hmm. in getting all these materials that we need and permissions to do this kind of stuff. Thea mm -hmm. slash Thea <laughs> is the person that you need to go and send and talk to people because she just can get all these things accomplished. Um, and that was, you know, that was most helpful. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, what kind of condition was the mill in? Was it starting to sag and start to go into the river a little at that point? Or? It wasn't going into the river. It was the opposite direction is where the, the main problem was. I can, I can show you. Uh, the river is in back here. Mm -hmm. But where this little office building, part of the building is, it had fallen, I want to say anywhere between five to eight feet. It, had, it was breaking off and it was and the undergirdings weren't sound. So um, that was that was a concern. We initially thought maybe the river was going to be a problem, mm -hmm. as in uh, in uh, Rutherford County, where the Brown's Mill. Brown's Mill was in the process of being renovated and uh, imploded, you know, so to speak, mm -hmm. uh, and fell before it could be preserved. Mm -hmm. But uh, Thanks to Tom and his work with engineers, uh, he had a clear understanding of what was involved, and he inevit and <clears throat> was was not able to save the little office that had to be removed. But the undergirding uh, was uh, major beams are re are replaced and making it a sound start for his uh, renovation. Mm -hmm. If you look in that that survey that the MTSU Historic Preservation did, mm -hmm. they have drawings that show the weaknesses and where things needed to be done, mm -hmm. and and they're really detailed and very clear about what was, mm -hmm. and and they did that survey like in '94 or '95 or something, and so anything they said it just got worse, uh, but it's very it's very detailed. Mm -hmm. In fact, uh, I just thought of this, that we we had a uh, a company give us a bid on some of the basic things they could do for us if we were able to raise that much money mm -hmm. just to get that part done. Right. So but, we were willing to stabilize it even when we didn't own it. Mm -hmm. right. so, so you worked really hard to get it to where possibly someone could have it, could buy it like Tom Brady did and do the full restoration. So what does the mill mean to you two and to the community? I guess I'm a newbie. <laughs> I've only been here 22 years. <laughs> and, but uh, uh, the mill obviously is connected with days, gone by days that were really essential here. Uh, mm -hmm. Grinding, grinding your cornmeal just for your basic basic foods. Uh, there were so many times when the mill was uh, a meeting place, connecting place. It's even more recently, meaning in the 70s, was an arts and crafts place. It was uh, almost like a uh, health food store space for uh, different products that were bought and sold. And beyond that, just its location, in its place in history, uh, it's credited, its power in, in, is credited for bringing the first electricity to the area, even before Rutherford County had electricity. As basic as it was, it was really very important. 
Uh, it also, its location uh, goes back to Indians, uh, Native Americans meeting hundreds of thousands, uh, over a thousand years ago. It goes to World War II, uh, young, young men learning how to f prepare themselves for war by having, uh, doing uh, re maneuvers mm -hmm. in the area. And it just, uh, it's so all encompassing. Oh, the Trail of Tears was, part, was something that happened uh, just a long, long in front of the mill was that, and um, what else can I, oh, David, Dave Macon days. Uh, Mr. Macon was from the area and his history is part of the mill's history too. And those are just a few things that come to mind. Can you think of something? It's just a good resource that you don't want to lose. Mm -hmm. um, it's valuable to a lot of people personally, or it's it's a it's a window into a different way of life. Mm -hmm. So uh, I know that now a lot of weddings go on at the mill. Have you ever been to a wedding there? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I have not only been to a wedding, I have helped prepare a wedding. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> and so, yes, yeah. it's unique. It's yes. very picturesque. It's mm -hmm. very nice. And if you're trying to put the wedding on, mm -hmm. it's unique. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So, do you think that weddings going on there helps people to want to preserve it as well? I would think not just weddings, mm -hmm. but there have been class reunions mm -hmm. where especially uh, several of the older classes who, who as, as teenagers, knew the mill was part of their life, you know. Also, early on after Tom uh, was an owner, uh, a uh, <clears throat> video company wanted to uh, shot some Christian song videos there in, at the site. And I think part of that is the the peace that the that the uh, location offers. Mm -hmm. It's just very picturesque and peaceful. Mm -hmm. Nora Robinson is mm -hmm. um, the sort of events coordinator for Tom Brady, mm -hmm. and her phrase about the weddings is that um, she enjoys doing it and thinks it's very important because it's an important time in a person's life. So they're not going to forget about it. So it will continue on because then they can bring their children and grandchildren and show them, here's where we got married. Mm -hmm. Yes, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you're going to invite yeah. people that normally would not come to this place. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And once they've seen it, we, the hope is that they'll want to come back. Mm -hmm. It's a good place to have a party. We had a party there. Mm -hmm. and, and exactly what Thea said mm -hmm. has happened. Um, mm -hmm. That people who had never been out, here. It's amazing the people who live in Murfreesboro and stuff who who think they're falling off the edge of the earth to come east. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> and you know, and, and so they have they have come back and, and they tell us that you know they've enjoyed it and so that was very gratifying. Yes. Mm -hmm. Part of preservation also for our group and for me has uh, been uh, recycling because we're, we're environmentalists, most of, all of us are, I think you could say. And uh, also, uh, politically, uh, our being uh, in Cannon County, uh, which is a, a very modest economic community where folks uh, are very fortunate if they get a college education, oftentimes they end up in a factory job before they get that far, and they travel to the factory job there are, there are many things that they do without because the funding isn't readily available. But this is a treasure that could help them be proud of where they live. Mm -hmm. And also, it's an economic boost too now that Tom's yeah. taking it over. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, have both of you lived here in this area your whole lives or did you move here later? or? I've lived here since 1973. Mm -hmm. My husband took a job at MTSU. He mm -hmm. teaches school psychology there. Mm -hmm. And so that's why we came. So mm -hmm. like Theo, we are newbies. Yeah. And, um, and we're actually in Rutherford County. That's part mm -hmm. of the 
challenge of being this 501c3 um, or community organization is that we span two counties so when you get to be talking to somebody or another then you have to you have two county governments to be dealing with <laughs> So would you go to the mill when uh, in the 70s when you lived here? I did. Uh -huh. I did. Mm -hmm. I didn't, obviously, I didn't go often enough because they, <laughs> yeah. didn't, they didn't have enough, you know, business to keep in, to keep going. Mm -hmm. But I did go. Mm -hmm. So uh, what was it like for you then when you went there in the 70s? Um, I went there for some cornmeal and mm -hmm. I also went because I liked, I was a quilter at the time and I liked seeing the arts and crafts things that they had there. Mm -hmm. But I wasn't as good a customer then as yeah. I am now. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a better customer now. Yes. Do you go there for breakfast on Saturdays? Sometimes. Yeah. Uh -huh. But I also go because they, I just went because, um, they sell jellies and things also, mm -hmm. and I'm going to be visiting my brother next month, and he said, don't come without some of that cherry preserve. <laughs> <So, laughs> <Okay. laughs> I had to go down yeah. and stock up. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, um, uh, do you think that the mill can at some point get back to where it's functional and people are working there in things or do you think that it will say more as like a monument or something like that uh, that's that's almost totally in part to uh, what the state of Tennessee is willing to do mm -hmm. and the Army Corps of Engineers um, a couple of spring times ago um, I helped Tom put together um, probably 20 30 people, either politicians or department heads of environment and tourism and also agricultural uh, employ, you know, lead heads of, of uh, the, the ag offices and also um, the forestry all, ca all converged to, to find, to have a, find a solution for getting the water to run. Um, it the that operation uh, was controlled by a dam that or called a, it's correctly called a weir that needed repairing if indeed like we had hoped it could be grandfathered in that that the it, the repairs be made back to what it had been that seemed affordable but it it's a lot of permitting and regulation approvals before it could be done. Instead, <clears throat> what the environmental departments in, in Tennessee State had said was <clears throat> they wanted it to be the best of what it needs to be. And, and that was in excess of $2 million investment to make that happen. Mm -hmm. And at that time, that certainly put it out of any, any possibility. With a, we had hoped with a quarry just a few miles away with all the rock would, that would be needed to make some of the big uh, repairs that it would just be a shoe in. But um, with the requirements uh, that the state put forward, just to start with the engineer schematics uh, made it un undoable right then. I think Tom's dream would be that it would sir, do what it was supposed to do, even if it's only uh, opening the the waterway from on the other side of Murfreesboro Road uh, to so that the water could flow through and run the, run the dynamo that that gets all the machinery going. If it happened only on Saturday, four times a month, but uh, without without checking that we're not. Uh, destroying any kind of, of uh, water life that or affecting it negatively, uh, no one was willing to say, yes, I think we could. So I don't think he, he'll give up on his pursuit, but right now uh, he, it's just a matter of using a, an electric motor to get his organic uh, wheat flour and cornmeal done. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. All right. Well, um, do you still do fundraisers today? Do you still try to raise money for like these kind of projects, or are do you? Oh, mostly work with the funds you already have. Or, <laughs> so. Well, no, it's it's uh, it's gone in a little bit different direction, mm -hmm. especially now because we have an owner who we yeah. need to verify whatever we like to do. Mm -hmm. But uh, in 2000, in 2007, I guess this program actually started by the Lions Club to, to uh, design a, a Christmas ornament. So the first year they did, uh, and they're in Woodbury, they did the courthouse. In the second year, I encouraged the fellow that I knew who was running that, that uh, committee to do the Reedyville Mill, mm -hmm. just as an awareness thing because I wanted people to know it's it's alive and and we need to appreciate it. So uh, they they did sell them that year, and then uh, Park purchased uh, additional uh, ornaments, which uh, the mill will sell uh, with it, without any uh, reference to Christmas time. Just mm -hmm. that it's the mill, and uh, that's an affordable gift for for someone to pick up at the mill and mm -hmm. and then those funds help. Uh, what else would, would we have done? We've we've really taken, like Jane said earlier, taken the money and direct, directed it into our Heritage Committee. Mm -hmm. uh, early on, before we were even an official Heritage Committee, we did things like a, an egg activity book. Mm -hmm. Oh, I guess it says Heritage Project, so we were official, mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> but which question and answers for kids just simple ways for them to to know about this mm -hmm. this uh, piece of history that was right in their neighborhood. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure what else we've we've done other activities that we've that we, we had a we had a barbecue fundraiser dinner mm -hmm. when we were raising funds. This is what these pictures are. Mm -hmm. And we had a scavenger hunt. Uh, and that's what these pictures are. And we've done other projects just to pro just to promote awareness about the mill and or, and, uh, or make a different state projects. Uh, for example, the Reedy uh, the Reedyville Mill is named after Mr. Charles Reedy. Charles Reedy, mm -hmm. and the cemetery, small but uh, really special, is just within blocks of the mill. Okay. And so we, we've done a cleanup there. Uh, Make a Difference Day, we've, I think that was one of the projects was mm -hmm. that cleanup and we've done it more, had done it more than, than one year, just so people could be aware of what was right here in their community. Mm -hmm. The Art Center in Woodbury has, has been very kind in the past in their gift shop. They would sell, we had postcards, the artists that that um, gave us permission to reproduce their paintings and drawings and things. We made um, we made note cards and postcards and framed some prints. And the art center was kind enough to sell those for us. And so that was a that was a sort of small but steady fundraising thing. Mm -hmm. So. Besides the Art Center, um, have you brought in other community organizations and worked with them on projects and things? Only to the extent that the Lions Club was willing yes. to let us mm -hmm. take, you know, be part of their activities. They they ran that several years, and and uh, and so we were part of year two, which is which was a good thing. Not in reference to the mill, but in mm -hmm. reference to other activities mm -hmm. that we when we finished talking about the mill that we'd like to tell you about the mm -hmm. organization. Mm -hmm. Then we worked with other organizations. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, so, um, uh, with the mill, uh, was it easy to get people together to try to work on it? Or did you have to try to work really hard for that? <laughs> or did people care as much as they do back then? Uh, I mean, do they care as much as they do now, as they did back then? I think we were fortunate that uh, one of the initial key people, uh, mm -hmm. Teresa uh, Wilson-Tate, mm -hmm. 
um, was a fifth grade school teacher in the area. She could promote things with her daughter and with her daughter's friends. Uh, our, our members of our group, whoever they would know that knew our, our love for the meal would join us too. And, and so that's, that is where, to the extent that we raised, raised uh, awareness to help us. Mm -hmm. We did. And there were local people, you know, who grew up here. Well, yeah. The first, the first um, time that we put plastic over the windows and stuff, we had 30 some people that came oh. out and helped. Mm -hmm. And um, we're going to give you this to, that you can look at, but there's a write up from one of the early um, events. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So here it is. Lauren. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I'll definitely take that. So, so that's good. You have had a lot of community involvement throughout the whole thing, helping you along the way. We we want to make people aware mm -hmm. because in 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 your day to day life, oftentimes the things closest to you are the things that you aren't really observant of. Mm -hmm. And uh, this has been such a uh, success story in so many different ways that uh, I hope that, that the community, whether it's the Cannon County community or the Rutherford County, which of course is so much larger, 13,000 compared to a quarter of a million, I think, mm -hmm. uh, that each person that, touch, for whatever reason, touches and learns about the mill, hopefully will have a positive um, experience and just take it further. Mm -hmm. And part of that, of course, is is what we're involved with with the with the uh, oral histories. Mm -hmm. That's where we thought we were would really be letting that information get out. And um, and I don't remember the first first step that made that happen, but I think you will maybe how we connected <laughs> with Dr. Williams. No, but first we did with Evan Hatch from the Arts Center. Oh, that's right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. We met with him. We That's right. We met with him in the hopes of being just trained to be be the oral history people, you know, to do the interviews. And Jane and I went and had a session and learned which, which piece of equipment was most affordable and still uh, uh, user-friendly mm -hmm. in our cases, for sure. Uh, but then... <clears throat> And he did four interviews for us, mm -hmm. um, yeah. mm -hmm. and and we've been very grateful because some of these interviews, the people have passed on, mm -hmm. and so um, I mean they take their stories with them, and if you don't record them, yeah. mm -hmm. when well Teresa Wilson Tate has this saying about people say you can't take it with you, but you you can because when the when the it's okay. When the people pass on, they do take their stories with them if, yes. if they're not written down or recorded in some way. So mm -hmm. we were fortunate that that uh, Thea actually contacted Evan and, and he did four for us. Mm -hmm. And then he got busy doing things. So the MTSU opened up, the, they started the Gore, the Albert Gore Center. Mm -hmm. And we went in and talked to Dr. Williams and he said, oh, I can help you. So mm -hmm. he did. Mm -hmm. He did four for us, and um, and those have been amazing too. And now we have <laughs> you and Sharon doing them, and so it's yeah. it's a process. Yeah. Mm. Okay, Jane. So you were just telling me you used to do school tours at the mill. When the art center got to be so popular, they run plays for school children during the year, so people, groups, grades have to get organized and rent a bus to come to the art center and they rent the bus for the whole day but the play is only part of the day so we hooked up with them and got permission from the Epperly family to uh, include the mill and so we were like a part of the day and we would talk about the mill and its importance and then we would do a little tour of the village of Reedyville and show them where this, the Reedy Cemetery is and the corners that Colonel Reedy built, the historic home. And it was a good way to have time for elementary school children to become aware of it because they would come from different counties and different locales that wouldn't have any idea that it was there. 
So do school children still go there for tours? Do you know if they do? No, they don't mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. I think I think uh, my hope and, and the groups probably would be also that um, that doing things for the elementary school level kids in the community in the art center she was talking about was was eight different counties at different times were involved in in busing kids in uh, the hope would be that through funding. Uh, in public public school funding that sometimes is available for some of these things that uh, this could continue even mm -hmm. uh, with Tom Tom's ownership but that because one of his goals he said was to make sure that all those that could know about the mill and its history would know and to give it to children would make it uh, an even more likely uh, carrying on um, so I hope I personally hope that 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 will be something we can incorporate it and it of course takes some uh, agreements with the local uh, school board and and all the things you have to go through to make it easy to happen but I hope it does mm -hmm. yeah. so when did you all become a 501c3 and what did you have to go through to do that? Early on we we felt that 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 was a must do and even though it seemed to be involved at the time uh, in in community in groups that have had that experience since I think we really did it quite easily um, and it, it allows those who would like to contribute to our projects to, to have a tax write-off. And, and it encourages uh, those that aren't sure who we are, it assures them that we are not a fly-by-night, that we are someone that is established uh, and has done all the proper uh, state and federal things to, to make our group uh, truly functional. So that happened in 1992 that we first got met, and then a couple of years later, I believe, we became official. And it gives you credibility. Mm -hmm. It was a two-year process. They had did most of the work. Mm -hmm. we, had to, we had to keep, and luckily, since we're sort of hoarders, we had all the documents. I mean, every little meeting notice that we ever put up and every little write-up in the paper and stuff we had and we had kept those and so they did most of the work and we put it together and turned it in okay. it was about a two-year process wow and thanks and thanks to uh, Jane's ability to keep track of things uh, <laughs> things like when the the federal government wants a nonprofit tax return even though we had didn't have much in the way of funds to report it still was part of our requirement just to keep our status uh, she followed that through and continues to make it happen which is great yeah sometimes it's better to be lucky than good because i was just <laughs> following those forms um in the beginning we filed them and they were needed and then they said they didn't need them but since i had learned how to do them i was just following them every year and then they decided this is all federal then they decided that to keep your status you did need to have filed them and so a lot of organizations were caught be because they had been told they didn't need to and they didn't but we had so we slid on through and everything was fine that was great and I, something that we haven't um you and I haven't even talked about uh, mentioning, which is a real asset of the Rust family, is that that <clears throat> there you know, that, that we have um, we have experiences of doing um, with organizations and things, and that and so I knew that a five hundred one c three would be um, would be valuable to have mm -hmm. and. And I had some experience doing bookkeeping, and so I knew that following these things would would be sort of good. And mm -hmm. and and it turned out. I mean, who knew that the one sheet of paper was going to be so valuable? Because to go back and redo it would be just such a pain. Mm -hmm. So that worked out well for us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We we've had an assortment of things that 
that we've chosen to do over our existence, and that has that has come about just with networking, with quarterly meetings that we've had. Uh, and I can tell you, well, we can both tell you about some of the things that we had gotten involved with. Um, one of one of them, uh, Jane can describe, it was a result of a, a hurricane. Um, <coughs> hurricane Gustav was the year after Hurricane Katrina, mm -hmm. and people in this area were very involved in, in helping with those efforts and you may not remember but they evacuated people out of New Orleans when Hurricane Gustav was headed that way mm -hmm. so 500 people ended up camping in the MTSU rec center and mm -hmm. so I mean there they are all day long and there was nothing for the kids to do and I mean the university had a lot of things but our park put together activity books uh, activity packets uh, for 30 some kids and I took them in and they were they were so happy to get them I mean because by the time we got them together the kids had been there like three days and they used up all the um, the programs that the university had so they were really happy so that was one of the things that we did was we put together these um, packets activity packets for the children mm -hmm. The follow-up about hurricanes w was an awareness of weather, mm -hmm. and we uh, realized that there were there were folks in our community that probably couldn't afford a weather radio that would give them an opportunity to do what was necessary and safe. So Jane Jane got in touch with the uh, weather radio company and worked out a deal so that we could get uh, very fair pricing that we could afford to. Uh, cover most of that expense and just ask the uh, recipient if if they could to contribute a small amount so they would have a weather radio for their family and I don't remember the exact count of what we did but it was a, more than a hundred more than a hundred which was really great yeah, that is great. we worked with the Upper Cumberland Community help me eight Upper Re Cumberland Community Resource Center C H A Community Rural Upper Cumberland. S isn't it C H A? I'm not sure what all that's going to be. Upper Cumberland something organization, <laughs> right, right. <laughs> and they were yeah. so kind. Larry Davis. Davis was so kind to be our distributor um, because we needed we needed some way to s sort of screen people and um, and this is an assistance organization a state assistance organization so they knew of people and we also advertised in the um, Cannon County Courier so that people could contact us about that we wanted to make our funds go as far as we could and so we felt like people who could truly afford them should go to Kroger and buy them themselves mm -hmm. and and leave us with the funds to and we got a grant from the electric company Middle Tennessee Electric Co-op mm -hmm. um, to help fund that mm -hmm. uh, and and that that was good that was a good program yeah. mm -hmm. definitely I think what else to oh, yeah. what did you get your one thousand dollar award for? Hmm. Thea is um she should have four degrees in okay. in some kind of recycling <laughs> litter biological something or another <laughs> for all the seminars and all the meetings and things that she has gone to yeah. she should have credentials you know listed down with pins and banners and things <laughs> one of the things that we did was adopt a highway and uh, we joined in that program this is a long answer to your question we we participated in that program for 13 years and part of that is funded by the, the the Keep America Beautiful Litter Grant State Program, and they pay for the bags and the uh, our 
what do we wear? Oh, shirt, no, um, vest. Or go with the dark See, vest these, or, these are, yeah. oh, okay. or yeah. protective things. And, um, and they also uh, encourage uh, groups like ours across the state to do worthwhile uh, activities. And so we got a brochure from them. And at that time, our neighbor, Barry Ann Yuri, mm -hmm. every day would pick up, she would ride with her husband, she lives across the road, she would ride to her, with her husband to the top of the hill and she'd get out, he was going to feed his cows and she would get out and she would pick up the trash on the way back. And my husband on weekends would pick up the, the litter just from this area to the four lane highway. So I wrote that up and um, as a, in the, they were running a, a competition, a contest mm -hmm. about how local people help beautify. So I wrote it up about Barry Ann and my husband picking up this litter and we won a thousand dollar prize. Wow. So it, off we went. To a nice hotel in Nashville and publicly received their award. Had a luncheon and stuff. So we took that thousand dollars and I did research at the MTSU library about what is most effective in stopping litter. And the two things that were most effective was to have a sign that says, please don't litter. And you needed to be very careful how you worded it so that you weren't aggressive. It was better to be cute, not too cute, but sort of cute. And then also education. So a friend made us, because he is in the sign business, he made us a do not litter sign that was right up at the corner of the four lane highway. And then we, and since that was free, we took the thousand dollars and we hired uh, a teacher. And she came up with a curriculum that we did with elementary school children. And Thea, with all of her recycle uh, contacts and stuff, we put together a packet. And we did every school child at Westside School in Cannon County and Kittrell Elementary School, in, uh, which is the local Rutherford School. Mm -hmm. And um, Jane Sanborn did, was the teacher we hired and she did programs. And then we also handed out these activity packets. And we had contests for the best anti-litter motto and we had refrigerator magnets made out of it and stuff. I was trying to remember how the magnets came in on that, but that's what, and they were cute, and the kids had some neat ideas, and we, and they, we had them done in bright colors, and uh, it was a neat way to. And we gave you some. Yes. <laughs> oh, well, yeah. And now you, and now you know the rest of the story. <laughs> so. <laughs> yes. So, um, what have you done uh, with regards to the rock quarry and? people wanting to bring another quarry in to the area. <laughs> the initial rock quarry that got us started mm -hmm. is now run by Vulcan. It's in Cannon County. Mm -hmm. Initially it was run um, by a private company, a, a local private company who were not good citizens. And they had a public hearing about it and there was a lot of antagonism by local people about it. Um, Cannon County doesn't have any zoning, so there's no way to stop it. Um, but you could, you could approach it to make sure that the operator operated in such a way that meets the state and federal law uh, regulations. So you, you have all kinds of issues. You have blasting, which almost always they meet the federal regulations because they're so loose. We had seismographs out here all the time. Not much to do, but people still have cracks in their houses and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. You have water pollution from runoff, and you also have a water issue because one of the ways to keep down the air pollution is that the, um, the roads and the trucks and everything are supposed to be watered all the time, constantly. The trucks, when they leave, are supposed to run through a water bath so they don't track dust out and they're supposed to spray down so you need a lot of water and then you've got runoff pollution areas so mm -hmm. that's another that's a 
pretty much a state thing. The air thing is another state thing because they're making all this limestone dust. The air was the easiest to tackle, and so I went off to what they call smoke school. And um, they, this, this is a training program for mostly state officials so that they know what is truly pollution. So when you look at a dust cloud, you can see, you learn to identify whether it is under regulation or over regulation, whether they're violating. Um, so once I had that credential, although the operator was supposed to allow me on the property, they wouldn't, they reneged on their um, agreement. But I could sit off property and see. It was very easy to see. They were <laughs> illegal most all the time. Um, so eventually they went away. They, they broke enough regulations and they, they went away. So Vulcan is a much better corporate citizen. That is not to say you want a quarry in your backyard, mm -hmm. but they are a much better corporate citizen. Mm -hmm. To show their good intentions before they even came came on uh, to the facility, they called and asked if they could meet with Park to discuss uh, what our concerns were. Maybe they had heard that we were a thorn in, in someone else's, another quarry's <laughs> side, mm -hmm. but we want... I'm glad that they did because we wanted to to be clear that that there that there are issues of of life quality like breathing and clean water and and uh, and also the uh, noise levels of their blasting and the trucks that was an issue too the trucks used to like to come down some of the side roads uh, near the little post office in Readable instead of taking the, the correct roads to get to their to pick up or uh, or <clears throat> their, or pick up their their gravel or to uh, run and run back for another one time is of the essence for a driver because the more loads the more money and so he uh, that was an issue that we had to deal with uh, to try to improve them going through a small uh, community with children mm -hmm. but uh, Vulcan was, uh, to the best of our knowledge, has been mostly cooperative and, uh, and has been a good neighbor. Now there are two more new quarries in Cannon County. Mm -hmm. And uh, one at the intersection of 64, Route 64 and the John Bragg Highway and another one all the way in town. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it's obvious that the the one at the intersection of 64 and John Bragg Highway is hardly going yet, but the trucks are amazing. And the one in closer to town, I mean, they're they're just not doing it right at all. But they're doing, they're working on a state road and they're working across the street from an art center of all places to, to have a visual, uh, awful <laughs> view of things. They average over a hundred trucks a day and uh, and sometimes the dust is like you're in a fo morning fog. Though they do wet down roads, they don't what they do, don't run that they don't they run the run, trucks through it. No. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but what that has done, and not necessarily just with park members, but with people interested in quality of life, uh, is gotten people charged up to at least attend some meetings to discuss what's going on, and if. If they can't change today's quarry, perhaps they can change what's needed for some for some authority or control for future future quarries or, or entities that need to to be placed in uh, in a different location in their community, not near residential homes. Mm -hmm. We participated in Make a Difference Day. It's a national in October. I think President Reagan's daughter started it. Or um, anyway, it's a national um, program that a person or a group can do something small that makes a difference. It doesn't have to be huge, whatever. But every little piece that you do does make a difference. And the Parade Magazine. It runs winners. Um, 
and you know, of course, we've never won yet. But, <laughs> <laughs> we've got but, been, we've been got gotten recognition, yes, acknowledgement. We get we get, we get um, certificates. Right. <laughs> but one of the things, one of the make a difference was like cleaning up the um, Walker Peaks uh, grave site, mm -hmm. which is up here in the um, close by the house, and um, just. Each year we try to take some type of little project that we're going to do, and that, that was one of them. We cleaned up the Reedy Cemetery, that was another um, one that we did. Mm -hmm. And part of those things is the repercussions have been good because we had another cemetery on between here and Murfreesboro that we were slated to do, and Jim mentioned it, my husband Jim mentioned it, and it turned out that who he was talking to it was their family cemetery and they went wait a minute we can do that you don't have to do that and so now they keep it up every year that thing was grown up the trees were taller you know six feet tall and now they keep it up um it was like it had been gotten beyond their consciousness mm -hmm. um, so that was a wonderful and occasionally yeah. there are social things that we can get involved with too uh, one event that we helped uh, work with was a blue was a bluegrass festival mm -hmm. <clears throat> that we were part one of the sponsors and it was uh, really a half a dozen or more very well known uh, performers that through a grant uh, the groups were affordable and uh, it was at a local park uh, in Woodbury and we were glad to be part of that part of that and have our name name at least recognize that we are a p part of the community and efforts and I, we may have already referred to the there was uh, there are annual bicycle runs or the events that take place and mm -hmm. well on a one given t event we were the the water ho watering hole mm -hmm. for the at the Cannon County Rutherford County line mm -hmm. um, yeah. when we we referred to the Reedy Cemetery uh, if well, I, I was going to ref t tell you more about the Reedy family, but then mm -hmm. I I just remembered one other program that we hadn't uh, mentioned that we still might want to mention. Oh yes, that's good. Okay, mm -hmm. would you do that? <laughs> we work with Kroger. Um, they are very good about when you get affiliated with them and you get on their. Um, it's called Kroger Cares, and you set up a program with them and you have a card it's a gift card and when you renew it any everybody in your organization when you have spent five thousand dollars then they send you a check for four hundred dollars oh. and it's mm -hmm. a wonderful thing but it's only available for churches or nonprofits so see our 501c3 enables us to do this mm -hmm. and that's a great thing I mean it's sort of like you know you have to buy groceries anyway and um, how nice of them it doesn't cost Definitely. the community, uh, our, our organization, anything. Right, and they do all the record keeping. Right, and we're just, we're just required to, to funnel our cash funds through a gift card that will help record what we spend. And then when all of our group's recordings, like she said, uh, hit a certain amount, then, then we'll get sent a check, which we can use any way we see fit. So that's been nice. Yeah, that's a really <laughs> great program. <laughs> Like. So, were there any other programs or anything like that that you've done that you were wanting to tell me about? Other, other than um, a, a, a little agreement that turned out to be very uh, useful was I followed through on a, on a print, a pencil print that had been, or an ink print I guess it was, that had been done of the Reedyville Mill. Uh, I bought one when I first came to the area from from the uh, the artist who who I found out later had was now deceased and, and I went to visit his widow and asked if she had any more prints. She had a couple which um, I purchased and then I asked her, "Do you think that it would be all right if if we used your print to make copies to use as a fundraiser to promote our heritage committee?" Uh, she said she said that her 
she was no longer in charge of any of that, that her son, who owned an interior design company in downtown Nashville, was in charge of all of that. And that she, the next time he came to McMinnville to see her, she would, she would mention that. Well, I was a little apprehensive, you know, it sounded like maybe this has gone past what is, what is doable. But to our surprise, uh, John Sharp is his name, uh, responded to, to the message he had gotten, saying that he thought it would indeed be wonderful and would honor his father. And so uh, Tom Brady had chosen that print or the, or the mini version of, of that print to label everything that he has in the, uh, that he advertises and, or has for sale, like the, like the uh, little jellies and things. And so whoever sees that is really connecting to the print and to the intention of the artist to promote an 1800s mill. And I thought that was quite wonderful. Mm -hmm. And I think one other thing that happened that was kind of neat, uh, I took a little picture a long time ago. Uh, uh, I drew, kind of drew this from a little picture, a photo, mm -hmm. you know, just to get the idea of the sizing. And um, we used it for this little activities book. And then also uh, the, the local lady that uh, orders our Cannon County maps mm -hmm. said that uh, she, she could use some little something that would say that the, there was a mill. So that little sketch goes on every map that, of Cannon County that's ever printed at no charge to us. And mm -hmm. it's still to say that we, that the mill exists. So I thought yeah. that was kind of an awesome thing that happened too. Yeah. Another thing we did was help with the cemeteries, the, the Cannon County. Oh, we did a project. Right. That is part of the, the county maps. And that's probably how that connection came to be. Uh, we did a project to identify uh, whoever w whoever was in whatever it, where the cemeteries were in the county, and for families that might want to locate their ancestors, and then those all those uh, numbered sites are located on the county map and then listed on the back of the map, and that was our project to try to get as many as we could ID for that project. We took a section of the county and volunteered to do that. Yeah. There are like 70 some family cemeteries in Cannon County, which is not a large county. Mm -hmm. And uh, and and so we would physically go to where those, and, and some of them weren't where they should have ought to have been, and mm -hmm. some of them you knew there were new ones that weren't on the old maps. Yeah. So we mm -hmm. helped in updating that. And they could be as small as just a family that, that uh, indicated a, a space on their farm where their ch where they would be buried or their children or and uh, the two three generations of family just was there and but because it was a cemetery it became a, a holy place where people couldn't just like in the that you read about or hear about the Native American uh, cemeteries uh, you you can't just dig them up and remove them or do anything to them. They, mm -hmm. they belong to that, to that uh, holy space. Mm -hmm. And so it was really kind of neat to find out how many and what size and how old. Yeah. So that was great. Mm -hmm. I think the only other thing that I was going to mention was that uh, Mr. Reedy, who, who st started a lot of activities in our little community, uh, has an aunt, a great, great, great grandson. I don't know how many greats we need, <laughs> but someone, a, a fellow from um, uh, Alabama who, who's, who is related, came up um, over a year ago with his two brothers to try to connect to his, to his uh, ancestors, it, to connect to the Reedy Cemetery, which is close by and see what its condition was, to see what family was around and to see and learn about the mill. He became so involved and excited about it that he has since emailed or contacted up to 2,000 of those connected relatives or friends of the Reedy family and has uh, put together a uh, family reunion, which has been over a year in the making. It's slated for August of 2012, coming up soon. 
and he's incorporated um, what whatever Camden County has to offer for people, whether it's our antique stores or our little um, bread bed and breakfasts or our art center or what restaurants we have or um, anything he could think of that would be of interest to people coming from out of the area and then connect with breakfast at the mill, which is, by the way, served every Saturday with organic uh, corn cakes or wheat cakes, pancakes, and uh, usually quiche and occasionally frittatas, mm -hmm. uh, and all very delicious and all while you're listening to live bluegrass music. Mm -hmm. So it's really great. Anyway, that will be part of this event. It'll, there'll also be uh, gatherings, um, mostly informal because you know, it's difficult to have a sit down and also with a sit down you you end up visiting just with a few people in one space this way a buffet type thing events and uh, will be take place in a couple different areas and people will get to meet and greet to help fund this uh, Larry Reedy is this gentleman's name he uh, put together a project that was really it, got to involve all our, the local folks here that wanted to be involved. Uh, a cookbook as a fundraiser. Uh, we, the local folks here, we were all asked if we had a, uh, a, res a recipe that we thought was would be good for this book, or in Mr. Reedy's case, any of his relatives that really had uh, Aunt, Aunt Clara Reedy or, you know, family. Um, recipes that had been handed down uh, would all be put in the book and he would use a couple of the photos of uh, the Reedy family house and um, that all came to being to be and it's done very well and uh, that was a wonderful project too that he brought to us yeah mm -hmm. so I'm sure he plans to do things like uh, the family, the family Reedy mug, if you want to <laughs> attend, and uh, any other th pictures that um, they it's shared with each other in this process, yeah. which can only bring uh, lots more people an awareness and a and a fun experience. Great. So, how else do you advertise yourself, the organization? I guess we really haven't done any official um, marketing. We've discussed po possibilities at times because we've tried to decide whether we should be should we be bigger at what we what we uh, you know have a larger group to to get more projects done. Uh, should we and uh, as far as we've gotten with this so far is just to take another look at our uh, our official bylaws and, and our, our uh, statements of what we want to stand for and I don't and I don't know that we've really met since then to to decide have we we passed the bylaws we passed the bylaws revision and we have that mission statement we have a website mm -hmm. www.park.org mm -hmm. and um, <laughs> Whenever we're going to have a meeting, it's advertised in the newspapers and stuff. But like mm -hmm. they said, we're, we're a little quiet right now. Mm -hmm. When we were really pushing to purchase the mill, we were on the radio and, and, and we, had, we pushed to be in the newspapers and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but we're, we're sort of quiet right now. Mm -hmm. we're, we're concentrating on y'all doing those <laughs> wonderful <laughs> interviews for we're us. We're good. We're good. <laughs> And I think we've had, we've had met with some ideas about how to pr promote the information that, that you all are collecting for us, uh, whether it be in a, some kind of banners or, or uh, maybe uh, videos at the mill for people to, that want to walk through the mill and have a self-tour of sorts to have the advantage depending on their age level. Um, and we've talked about the, uh, the possibility of uh, someone in costume when uh, groups of kids are going through, whether that would be something we would be involved with um, because Tom, frankly, has his hands full and his assistant, Nora, who's quite wonderful, also is busy with just weddings and reunions. 
but well, there's something in that order. Since we are a neighbor with the art center who has who trains budding theatrical young people, mm -hmm. maybe there was something could come with that. Mm -hmm. In connection with the website too, is the idea, the hope, of, well, the intention of linking with the art center and with other entities mm -hmm. of interest, the chamber of commerce and such, mm -hmm. so that uh, they'll see us and can can check on us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, was there anything else you want to add about the mill or what you do or anything like that? All I can think of is a thank you for the opportunity with MTSU mm -hmm. because this takes it to an international level. Mm -hmm. It can, if someone wants to follow through on uh, old mills or th things in Middle Tennessee or uh, Interesting folks who have been involved with this with this facility, uh, that's going to be available, mm -hmm. and hopefully they'll they'll use their summer vacation sometime to come see us. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. We thank you very much. <laughs> well, good. Well, thank you for this opportunity. And I just have one more question. Uh, do you consent to donate this interview to the public domain so we can share it with others? Well, as I've just told you, that, yeah. that's, that's certainly <laughs> yeah. our, been yes. our intention all along yeah. that, uh, mm -hmm. that this should be mm -hmm. valued and cherished by more than just us. Okay. Yes. Yes. All right. All right. Well, thank you.